Hey y'all, this is Judgment 3D Sorcerer and this is my partially completed 3D printed chair. Uh, you can see that it is life size. It took up uh, about 15 rolls of filament, so pretty big print in general. I printed this on a Vanblad P1P and three Prusa Mark III's and a Prusa Mini. So uh, five different printers involved in this print. So hopefully this comes together okay. There are some things I probably would change if I could go back, but I think that it should at least uh, fully assemble and then we'll kind of see if it works then. So thank y'all for watching. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so the idea for this chair kind of came from this chair that I saw, I think on Twitter somewhere. And the way they make this is they put this on the side and then print the whole thing uh, on its side here. They actually have a picture of it here being printed. And I thought that this really looked pretty cool. And obviously I wasn't able to mimic this exactly, but it gave me a good baseline to start from. And actually down here, they have kind of the variations they went through and then they have a downloadable spec sheet. So I downloaded that and then was able to import it into Fusion 360. And you can see here is the outline to that chair. So that gave me a good reference point to kind of start from when I was making mine. So I basically use that for sizing guidelines. So you can see that it matches it pretty closely. Some of the changes I made was because the uh, sweep that I did to make this shape wouldn't exactly fit some of these tight angles here, so I had to change that up a little bit and just make it easier to print for a bunch of smaller printers. So here's the path that I made to sweep along there. You can see in the blue. And then this is the actual uh, profile that I made to sweep. And I originally was gonna add some holes because so, I thought that would kind of look cool, but ended up uh, just changing it to a smooth surface like it's shown. And then some other things I did, obviously I don't have that big printer, so I had to cut them up into smaller pieces. So this is where I did that. And then all these holes also made a grid pattern where I can make it into boxes, which were printable on the Prusas. And I had you know a couple of Prusas, so I was able to do a couple of these at a time. And uh, that's, pretty much how I did it. There's a couple of other steps in there, but I don't wanna belabor the point too much. One thing that I did do that I thought was pretty clever was as I printed stuff off, I would change the color of it to gold. And then once it was printed fully, I would change that one to green. So whichever one I was printing, I would change it to gold. And that way I could just keep up with like what I needed to print or what was already printed and what wasn't printed because I didn't wanna go through and rename all the different bodies and stuff. All right, so I got one of those parts imported into Prusa Slicer here. So the first thing that I did was I went and changed the top and bottom layers to zero. So you could see the infill and that was part of the thought process behind uh, making a 3D printed chair was I wanted to do stuff that you couldn't do in any other manufacturing technique. And this is one of them is the infill kind of makes 3D printing unique if you embrace it to a certain degree. So you can see this is a different type of infill. And I thought that that would look kind of cool initially, but what ended up happening was it's, it's pretty weak in the diagonal direction. Uh, so that ended up breaking when I just kind of Put a little bit of force on it so i ended up changing it to gyroid so again i come back to here and then go down to infill and i changed this to gyroid here instead of grid so if you slice it again see that that's really thick it's 15 percent infill and if you did this it would take almost a day per piece. So, you know, ideally probably leave it pretty high, but I didn't want it to take that long. So I ended up turning it down to only 5% infill. So uh, we'll see if that's strong enough, but it really sped up the process a lot. So see now it's about 10 or 11 hours. So that was manageable, especially since I had four different printers printing this part. All right, so I kind of cleared off this a little bit so I can show y'all how I assembled everything. So this is one half of part of the chair and this is kind of a mirrored other half. So basically just split it down the middle and these come together you know, like that to make the, the back and the part you sit on. 
and uh, I printed these little pegs out of just some PTG. It's actually the Prusament Recycled PTG, and it's kind of off color because it's a mixture of a bunch of different colors, but it is cheaper than the regular PTG. And uh, those just slot in there, and I put some super glue, you know, down in that hole, and then on this, obviously, and then slot that in, and then put some super glue also, you know, on that, and then put it together like that. All right, so here I am putting together some of the pieces. You can see I'm using that peg and some super glue, as I mentioned earlier, and then I'm about to glue up some of the white pieces here in a second. One thing I would do differently if I had to do this over again would be to use a hexagon peg instead of a circular peg. There's really two reasons behind that. One is that the hexagon peg would align everything as well as offer support, so you wouldn't have to worry about the part twisting around a hexagonal peg since it does have those flat sides. And then the other reason that I would use a hexagon peg is because the layer lines would actually be perpendicular to the stress. So it would actually be a lot stronger than a circular peg. So that's something I would do differently. And if you're trying to do something like this, I would recommend that as well. This is my neat little invention for getting this super glue out of this tub. Uh, this is just a little small clamp that I use. And this is super viscous. It's probably getting old, but I just wanted to use the rest of it while I could. So this helped to kind of get everything moving. Some redneck engineering for you. So after these pieces sat for a little while, I started to add the white pieces to them. So here I am adding some super glue. I actually found some other super glue, which was a lot easier to apply. So that was helpful. And here I am adding the white piece onto that black piece there. You can see it fits pretty snugly. And now I'm about to add it to the chair itself. And here in a second, you're about to get to see my little clamp that I made. It looks like a phone. You can see that they kind of grip around in those two holes. And then I'm just trying to make sure everything's aligned well for the chair. And since that clamp is holding everything in place, I thought I could go ahead and add another piece. So here I am adding that piece right above it. And now I'm about to combine the white piece with the topmost piece here and make sure that that's nice and aligned as well. Now I'm starting to add some of the pieces to the back here and I actually had to add those one by one because of how the circle was shaped there. Couldn't just pop those in so that's why I did it that way and then here I am adding the top so it looks pretty good. Thank you.